Hi, this video is on using the uh, map viewer on the Utah Geological Survey website to download and view geologic maps of your field area. First thing you need to do is go to geology.utah.gov. Near the bottom of the page, they have a button here that says Geologic Map Portal. You click on that and it opens the portal up. Then from that, you can zoom into your field area, your area of interest, and click on um, the area that you'll be working in. So if you're doing Little Cottonwood Canyon, you can zoom into Little Cottonwood Canyon and click on that. <clears throat> in the unit descriptions mode, what will happen is eventually the unit description will pop up. So the unit I clicked on in this case was Quartz Monsnite, which indicates the um, the little cottonwood stock in this area. However, another nice feature about this website is it has a maps download tab up here. You can click on that, and you click on the same point. Instead of the unit description, you get all of the maps that are under the point that you've clicked. And here is the Draper Quad, and click this little arrow to show next map. And you have the Salt Lake City Quad, which is a larger map. It says 100K here, which is larger than the 24K. So it's, it's a smaller area, more detail. Then you go to an uh, even larger map, which is the state of Utah. Less detail, much larger area. Not as good of a reference to site. <clears throat> and then finally, another state version of the geologic map. This is a pretty good map to use, the 100K version. So I'm going to pick this one, and just to see <clears throat> what my options are, I'm going to click on the PDF file. And from the PDF file, I can get the reference information that I need. So I'm going to click Open PDF Version, and it should bring up what I need to see. Here we go. Here is the um, geologic map of the Salt Lake City 30 by 60. It not only includes Little Cottonwood Canyon, but it also includes Big Cottonwood and all the other major canyons along the valley. This yellow area here is the valley. So what you're looking for when you want to reference something like this is the author and the version and stuff information. And uh, what you'll have to do is zoom in in the map and find the <clears throat> find the author information. It's usually at the bottom in the center. So it looks like there's the scale. There should be something near the top. And sometimes it's even on the second page. But basically what you have to do is search around until you find information on the, the author. Oh, here we are. Geologic map of the Salt Lake City 30 by 60 quadrangle. So this part here is your title. Here's your author, Bruce Bryant, and there's the date that it was published. And then for more information, we have this miscellaneous investigation series and even a map number. So all this stuff can be put into a citation machine <clears throat> and you can cite maps. I think the citation machine even has an option for for maps uh, if you if you search for it. So then you can search for. Let's see if this map pops up. Geologic map of the Salt Lake City. We can just type that in and see what we get. a whole range of things in the citation machine. So you find the appropriate one. This looks like a good one. And it will produce a reasonable should produce a reasonable citation of that. Um, let's see here. Hmm. 
Yep. And here's different information you can fill in. You can add a uh, author and stuff like that, and create your citation, and you get something like this. So obviously, uh, it helps to add detail to make these uh, citations better. But you already have an APA citation just from viewing the interactive map. I don't recommend citing the map itself. It's not a good source. It's the individual maps that make this up that are good sources to cite. So make sure you cite those. Okay, thank you.